the the five thousand dollar cars of three years ago are now, you know, seven thousand dollar cars. The the twenty thousand dollar cars of three two or three years ago are now, you know, twenty six thousand dollar cars. I mean, we've seen we've seen prices go up across the board, and uh, as as you pointed out, it's largely because. Uh, two things. So first, COVID-induced, you know, people not taking public transport and, uh, and moving back into car ownership um, sec- and, and not being able to travel on holidays and so on. And also u- new car supply shortages. You know, people just can't get into new cars at the moment. Um, and, uh, and as a result, uh, they're, they're, they're buying used cars. And if you think about it, any car that I, I buy and take home, whether it's a, a new car or a used car, is still a new car to me. So um, that's, that's, they're the two large factors that have, that have caused prices to continue to rise. And that's obviously benefited your business. And when we spoke uh, on this program about a year ago, you'd recently acquired a 49% stake in Trader Interactive. Presumably it was a good investment, capitalising on that second-hand car market because you're now uh, hoping to attain the, the whole business. What is so attractive about it? Yeah, look, Trader Interactive is uh, a business that's uh, it's it's involved in a number of different markets. So car sales, everyone thinks about car sales as being cars, and clearly that's what what we do the best. But we we also have a number of other businesses where what we call a multi vertical business. So we have caravan and camping trucks, um, boats, uh, farm machinery and equipment that we sell in 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 other across other sites. And Trader Interactive is, is a business in the United States that sells all those things um, but cars. And, and they are the biggest player in the United States. And it's a, it's a very attractive market. It's about 16 times the size of the Australian market. And you know, what we've been observing over the last many years here in Australia, but also in the United States, is people are moving into, into lifestyle assets like caravans, like boats, personal watercraft, uh, motorcycles and so on. And particularly with COVID uh, over the last couple of years, it's really accelerated that because people haven't been able to travel. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a great business and, uh, and we're, we're clearly excited to be a, be a part of it. Surely the momentum for second-hand cars will eventually start to wane as we continue to see an easing of the supply chain issues that have um, you know, plagued the industry for some time now. How will you combat that? The, the question is, when does that happen? Is the first question. And at the moment, uh, you know, I don't think any of us are really seeing um, an, a, a significant easing in the supply chain around new cars. So, yeah, that's going to keep used car prices elevated for some time, uh, I expect. Now, when used car pricing does eventually come down, I think I think what we'll see is we'll probably see more consumers coming into the market because prices are probably at, at a stage now where things are potentially getting more expensive for individuals. Um, and so, uh, look, I wouldn't be surprised to see um, uh, used car prices coming down longer term um, and, and consumer demand still staying high because it, you know, used cars have even been unaffordable for some people at the moment as well. But I guess only time will tell and, and none of us know at this point. The RBA Governor Philip Lowe recently said that there were signs the semiconductor chip shortage was starting to ease. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, it, it's again, it's manufacturer to manufacturer. Um, some of the manufacturers in some parts of the world have had limited trouble in terms of being able to deliver cars into into Australia, whereas you know, other manufacturers have had continued to have shortages. I'd say overall, we're certainly in a, in a better place today than what we were, but. Uh, there, there are still there are still problems with supply, and there are still long waits with particular makes and models of cars. And I, and I don't see that easing up um, any time in the immediate short term. But uh, over time, it, it will it will continue to get better. I suspect. Some of the big car makers, like Volkswagen, for example, have been reporting pretty significant production falls still, uh, and obviously talking about the the chip shortage. But uh, I guess looking forward to 2024 is when they see that kind of balancing back out again. Are you sort of aiming for that time frame as well? I, 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 I'd like to see it uh, a little bit sooner than that. You know, again, just coming back to used car prices. Um, but, you know, there's every possibility that that could be the case. I mean, you know, when we were talking 12 months ago, I would have said that, 
you know, we'd expect new car supply to, to you know, be back to where it was within 12 months. And here we are sitting in front of the camera again and it's the same, still the same issue ongoing. So I think it's going to take some time to work its way out of the, out of the system, but uh, 2024 is, feels like a long way off. Mm. And of course, EVs are growing in popularity. Do you worry about how that will impact your business model as we see more Australians and Americans uh, and over the world um, buy new electric cars? No, I mean, our, our business model works uh, on the basis of turnover. So any time a car is bought and sold, it's, it's great for our business. So if people are moving from internal combustion engine vehicles to electric vehicles, I mean, that's, that's good for our business still. I and mean, the key things that, that determine when people buy and sell cars won't change with EVs. Um, so the reason why people tend to change cars is because they have a change in, in lifestyle need. So more kids in the family, I need a bigger car. Um, I, I, you know, I've, I want the latest um, you know, features of, of a car. I want the latest shape and styling of a car. All my cars done you know, 100,000 kilometres and that's when I like to turn my car over. All those things will exist um, in the future, whether we're driving EVs or, uh, or internal combustion engine cars, and, and they're all, they're all, that's all good for our business. So I don't really see any change as a result of, uh, of consumers moving from EV, uh, to EV from uh, internal combustion engines, but it's going to take some time. I mean, you know, last year, r roughly you know, under 2% of new cars sold in Australia were EVs. And uh, you, know, I even, you look at a market like the United Kingdom, and only 10% of new cars sold there were EVs. So it's going to take some time. When you think about the fact that you know, about 20 million vehicles are on Australian roads, uh, it's going to take some time for everyone to be driving EVs. Cameron McIntyre, great to talk to you on the program. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Rachel. Good to see you.